it's Maureen Muldoon and we are on lesson 193 of the Course in Miracles and if you like these lessons go ahead and give them a like and hit subscribe and then share them with your friends because a little miracle go a long way. Today we are on all things or lessons God would have me learn. Yeah this is a this is a really good one it's a little long so let's get to it. God does not know of learning yet his will extends to what he does not understand in that he wills the happiness his son inherited of him be undisturbed, equal and forever gaining scope, eternally expanding in the joy of full creation and eternally open and wholly limitless in him. This is his will and thus his will provides the means to guarantee that it is done. Like, that's so nice. Like, God's will is for our eternal happiness ever growing in scope. And yet, that's what we're wrestling with. God sees no contradiction, yet his son believes he sees them. Thus, he has a need for one who can correct his erring sight and give him vision that will lead him back to where perception ceases. God does not perceive at all. Yet, it is he who gives the means by which perception is made true and beautiful enough to let the light of heaven shine upon it. It is he who answers what his son would contradict and keep his sinlessness forever safe. Yeah, like we're going around here thinking you're guilty, I'm guilty, you're bad, I'm bad. None of that is true. These are the lessons God would have you learn. He will reflect them all and they reflect his love and kindness to his son. These are the lessons God would have you learn. He will reflect them all, and they will reflect his loving kindness to the son he loves. That's nice. Each lesson has a central thought, the same in all of them. The form alone is changed with different circumstances and events, with different characters and different themes apparent but not real. They are the same in fundamental content. It is this, forgive and this will disappear. <laughs> what does that mean, forgive and this will disappear? Listen, listen to me, come here, yes. we're dreaming, <laughs> and it's okay to have a dream, but you can't let the dream have you, that would be crazy, so don't let the dream have you, okay, you're having a dream, all the stimuli, all the happy sad, like all of that, it's just like your dream at night, I know that sounds crazy, but bear with me, these are the lessons that God would have you learn. Forgive and you will see this differently. Forgive and you will see this differently. Certain it is that all distress does not appear to be but unforgiveness. Yet that is the content underneath the form. It is this sameness which makes, um, which makes learning sure because the lesson is so simple that it cannot be rejected in the end. No one can hide forever from a truth so very obvious that it appears in countless forms and yet is recognized as easily in all of them. If one but wants to see the simple lesson there, forgive and you will see this differently. Well, of course that's true, you know. Forgive and you will see this differently. Because a forgiven mind is free. It's freed. You know, it's liberated. So of course you're gonna see things differently. These are the words the Holy Spirit speaks in all your tribulations, all your pain, all suffering, regardless of its form. These are the words with which temptation ends and guilt abandoned is, is revered no more. I'm reading actually out of my book. <laughs> this book is so old that it's like falling apart. I mean, it's literally falling apart. That's sad. That's really sad. But this was the first book that I ever got. I love this book so much. I don't care if it's falling apart. I'm falling apart. <laughs> I'm still quite lovable, if I do say so myself. Okay. These are the words which ends the dream of sin and rids the mind of fear. These are the words by which salvation comes to all the world. Shall we not learn to say these words when we are tempted to believe that pain is real and death becomes our choice instead of life? Shall we not learn to say these words when we have understood their power to release all minds from bondage? These are the words which give you power over all events that seem to have been given power over you. You see them rightly when you hold these words in full awareness. Do not forget these words apply to everything you see or any brother who looks upon a miss. I will forgive and this will disappear. 
How can you tell when you are seeing wrong or someone is failing to perceive the lesson he should learn? Does pain seem real in the perception? If it does, be sure the lesson is not learned and there remains an unforgiveness hidden in the mind that sees the pain through eyes the mind directs. So a lot of people say, I don't know if a lot of people say this, but I've heard this acronym for pain, P-A-I-N, pay attention inward now, and that all pain is just a little alarm clock going off in the body that's like, hey, you might want to pay attention to the situation. Form follows consciousness. Your consciousness has a glitch in the system and it's out picturing lumps and bumps and pains and you know, you just want to take that as an invitation, not an annihilation. You know, you just say, okay, so this pain has some purpose to it. Let me ask it what it is. And I think we did that two lessons ago and you can do it again today. God would not have you suffer. He would help you forgive yourself. His son does not remember who he is and God would have him not forget his love and all the gifts his love brings with it. Would you now renounce your own salvation? Would you fail to learn the simple lesson heaven's teacher sets before you that all pain may disappear and God may be remembered to his son? Yes. Like, don't you, don't you want that? Because if you, if you have that, then you can extend it to everyone. I would love if you had questions about this because it warrants questions. In fact, one that comes to my mind is like pain. I don't have to experience pain. I once suffered from migraines and they were terrible. This is my experience that I'm sharing with you. So take it for what it, what, what it is. And I just decided to feel the pain. And I went to my bed and I just laid down and I decided to just be with the pain. I just decided to be with the pain and I just laid there. And I laid there and I felt the pain. I had never done that before to really just be with it and be curious about it. I fell asleep, I woke up, and I have yet to have another migraine, and that was over 20 years ago. Like, I don't know if that can happen for you, but it's worth trying, okay? All things are lessons God would have you learn. He will not leave an unforgiven thought without correction, nor one thorn or nail to hurt his son in any way. He would ensure his holy rest remain untroubled and serene, without a care, in an eternal home which cares for him. And he would have all tears be wiped away, with none remaining yet unshed, and none but waiting their appointed time to fall. For God has willed that laughter should replace each one and that his son be free again. Into eternity where all was well, there crept a teeny mad idea at which we remembered not to laugh. So, like laughter. People ask me sometimes, like, uh, what is enlightenment? And I think to myself, it's every time you laugh. <laughs> it's like, and I think Deepak Chopra says, like, um, that... Uh, when you reach a greater state of awareness, I don't know if he calls it enlightenment, but he's like, you're, you know, you just begin to see the synchronicities in everything. And you laugh more. I think that's what he says. Either way, if he doesn't say that, he should probably say it because it's very wise. <laughs> Since there's one of us here, I'm going to say he said it. We will attempt today to overcome a thousand seeming obstacles to peace in just one day. Let mercy come to you more quickly. Do not try to hold it off another day, another minute, or another instant. Time was made for this. Use it today for what its purpose is. Morning and night, devote what time you can to serve its proper aim, and do not let the time be less than meets your deepest need. Give all you can, and then give a little more. For now we would arise in haste and go into our Father's home into our father's house. We have been gone too long and we would linger here no more. And as we practice, let us think about all things we saved to settle by ourselves and kept apart from healing. Let us give them all to him who knows the way to look upon them so that they will disappear. Truth is his message, truth his teaching. His are the lessons God would have us learn. So. It's saying, like, don't hold things off for yourself. Don't check the stars. Don't ask a thousand friends. Go into your internal teacher. Bring it to the Holy Spirit. Be like, 
this thing is messing with me. I don't know how to deal with it. And then wait and wait until you get a holy interpretation or a direction. That's all. That's all you have to do. This is so simple. So let's just do the one thing that's like the simplest thing to do. Each hour, spend a little time today and in the days to come in practicing the lesson in forgiveness in the form established for the day and try to give its application to the happenings the hour brought so that the next one is free from the one before. So it's basically saying like deal with your shizzle in the time that you have your shizzle and then leave it and get it cleared up and don't drag it into the next you know hour with you. It's um it's not easy to do. I will say that. Like I have I have dragged some dead corpses around in my day. You know, it's 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 an optimal idea. I hope that you can do this because if you do it, then it's easier for me. If I do it, it's easier for you. So let's walk each other home. So each hour, spend a little time today and in the days to come in practicing the lesson in forgiveness in the form established for today and try to give its application to the happenings the hour. The chains of time are easily unloosened in this way. Let no one hour cast its shadow on the one that follows and one that one goes. Let everything that happened in its course go with it. Thus will you remain unbound in peace eternally in the world of time. And God, this is the lesson God would have you learn. There is a way to look on everything that lets it be to you another step to him. So this is what brings me closer to God. And this is what brings me closer to God. And this is what brings me closer to God. And to salvation of the world. To all that speaks of terror, answer thus. I will forgive this and this will disappear. <laughs> it's a powerful statement. To every apprehension, every care, and every form of suffering, repeat these same self words. And then you hold the key that opens heaven's gate and brings the love of God the Father down to earth at last to raise it up to heaven. God will take this final step himself. Do not delay the little steps he asks you to take to him. So that is lesson. 193 and when I was getting my other book out today I found this little thing that I wrote and I don't remember when I wrote it but it's I don't know what this thing is but I'm reading it um, don't direct the course allow the course to direct you actually it says allow the course to take you it has its own wisdom and knows exactly where it needs to go if you try and direct the course, you will find yourself in struggle. You are best served when you go with the flow. Right now, when I speak these words to you, you intuitively understand, and for some of you, there may come to mind specific areas where you are measuring out love in teaspoons. <laughs> Who has given you this recipe for disaster? <laughs> Put down your measuring cups and your little agendas and all the ways you seek to control and direct and multiply, um, manipulate the love of God and instead allow it to simply wash over you. What you thought was a tidal wave is but a gentle swell and in all this changing tides you are held in the competent hands of grace. Would, would the fish attempt to direct the ocean? Or the earth seek to withhold the river? No, the fish makes no attempt at insanity, and the earth softens her ways to allow the river of truth to carve her. She receives the river and is transformed by its wisdom. So, too, is it with you. That's so beautiful. And I don't even know when I wrote this. It's like literally on like this scrap of paper. And it says on the back, this is a dream. Don't let the dream have you. Be awake in the dream. Stay awake and aware and let the dream wash in and just notice what messages get washed upon your shores. Notice who is calling you forth and why. You are now looking to, you are not looking to get anything, but let the Holy Spirit use you. Notice what lessons are being sought through you. That's doggone gorgeous. So... I do hope it was helpful. And I will see you tomorrow for lesson 194. <laughs> Hello.